Namaste. Well, something I've been waiting for for a long time finally happened. And I got an invitation to go and live in a very nice temple as a sannyasi and with full facility to continue my online and in-person teaching and coaching and work like that. So I'm going to be giving up my house, uh, which has turned into an expensive white elephant, <laughs> because I got it thinking I was going to establish a school here, uh, but it just didn't happen. So the interest is not on this side of the island, it's on the other side of the island in the Tamil-speaking community. So I guess I have to go where my fans are. Uh, it's much better than trying to interact electronically all the time. I get really tired of that. So over the next few days, I'm going to be packing up, taking care of a few little business items and so on and traveling and setting up my new place and all. So you're probably not going to see a whole bunch of videos for the next couple of weeks, but that's all right. In all the Brahma Sutra videos, in the video description, there are links to the texts and uh, to uh, the liquid text project which is the annotated version that you see on the screen during the videos. You should, really you should, download this stuff and study independently. And you should also use the SanskritDictionary.com site to look up any Sanskrit words and a good English dictionary to look up English words because that's the best way to study. That's the way I study. That's the way I've been studying since I was, you know, knee high to a pony. <laughs> People don't believe me when I tell them that if you can't recite the definition of a word, you don't know what it means. People think, you know, that they just instinctively or intuitively know the meaning of words. That's not so. Because every word in the English language, almost every word, especially the common words, the simple short words, have multiple definitions and senses of usage. So you have to be able to identify exactly which of those senses is being used in a given context. And of course, the way you do that is by knowing the definitions. I mean, knowing them so well that you can recite them. That is the standard. Otherwise, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about or anybody else for that matter. Because you don't know the meanings of the words. This is such a fundamental point. And when I tell people that, well, to revive your interest in learning and your ability to absorb and categorize information and then act on it, you actually need to go back and look up every single word in the dictionary and develop the ability to identify the definition based on the context. That's what Shankaracharya is doing in his commentaries. Oh, if it's good enough for him, it must be good enough for us. Good old Sri Lankan green tea. So what I'm saying here is that you really have to become independent. You can't rely on anybody, even me, to explain these scriptures, but they are essential 
to understand the actual truth. The Upanishads are giving the non-dual truth. So they are the source. Not me, not even Shankaracharya, although he does a fantastic job of explaining them. You have to go into them and learn them and understand them for yourself and then meditate on them. See, shravana means hearing. And after shravana comes contemplation. And after contemplation comes realization. So hearing comes first. And hearing includes getting the meaning, the exact meaning, the way it's originally intended in the text by the original author. So that requires knowing the definitions of the words. <laughs> and, you know, studying Sanskrit and all that can't hurt. This is a long-term project. This is a lifelong learning experience. You have to dedicate yourself for years to get any substantial or tangible realization of this deep spiritual truth. And even then it may not happen if you're not living the life, if you're not cutting out the excessive uh, sense enjoyment and chasing money and chasing, you know, the opposite sex <laughs> or whatever, chasing material enjoyment and desiring it. You have to let go of all these things, you know? I mean, old age will make you do it. But by the time that happens, you want to have a good store of knowledge. Like a bank account, you know, like an investment account that you've been saving, putting into for many years. And then it becomes adequate to sustain you when you can't work. So similarly, when you can't do sadhana anymore, when you can't do ceremonies and sacrifices and studies even, when the body becomes deteriorated to that point, that's actually the most important time to meditate. Because what you think of at the time of death is where you go in the next life. That is the purport of this pada, of Brahma Sutra, in a nutshell. And in the future, you know, God willing, I'll give you summaries of the other three padas, which are all very, very important. So if you don't get to hear it from me for whatever reason, go to the original and study and study it right and really get the meaning and put it into practice in your life and get the benefit, get the full benefit of complete enlightenment and self-realization. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.